Amber Heard come back. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Amber Heard, remember her? Of course you do. A.K.A. Amber Turd. An actress that was reasonably well-known, but certainly became extremely well-known as a consequence of the televised court action that took place last year between her and Johnny Depp. If, by some strange occurrence, you missed my analysis of her, Depp, and all things associated with them, there's a 99-video series that you can dive into. Just look for the Amber Heard playlist. It'll probably pop up at the end of this particular video. Prior to that court case, I had analysed Heard previously, explaining that she was a very performing narcissist. Once again, I was ahead of the curve, and her behaviour in court and the events that the court referred to only emphasised her narcissism writ large. There are others that failed to spot it, others that thought it was something else, but there's no doubt about it. The evidence is very clear that she's a narcissist. Following her overall defeat in court, and also in the court of public opinion, she was seen dotting around some thrift stores at one point, and then largely disappeared. She asserted control by withdrawal, and disappeared away abroad. Now, Harry's wife disappeared abroad, but she didn't stay out of the limelight because she thought that she was in the ascendancy. With Heard, it enabled her to continue to assert control by withdrawing. How might a narcissist such as Amber Heard be affected by such withdrawal? Well, she's not going to enter into a fuel crisis. The reason being, she would still have plenty of interaction with people, but on a smaller scale, and that would attend to her fuel needs. She might have a partner that she'd be engaging with, so an intimate partner. She has a child. The child perhaps might have taken on the role of primary source. She will have had contacts, some friends who would still support her. She would have staff. She would have family and therefore she would still have a fuel matrix. She still has her fans, so there would be numerous tertiary sources that would all still be providing her with fuel that she would find it easy to control and that she would gain character traits and residual benefits from. Indeed, as a consequence of withdrawing from public life, this meant that she wasn't popping up on the radar anywhere near as much as she once did, meaning that a lot of people would, in a sense, forget about her. Those that would lambast her on social media for her behaviour towards Johnny Depp took a break from doing so, meaning she didn't have to deal with those threats to control. She was far less written about or spoken about across social media and mainstream media. Thus, any challenges that arose from that, as they perhaps scoffed at her, telling us that a dog stepped on a bee, all of that meant that that challenge fuel fell to one side. She would not be starved of fuel, a fuel matrix would be different in constitution, in terms of far fewer tertiary sources, but that would not impact upon her in a way which would leave her in severe difficulty. Indeed, the trade-off in terms of tertiary fuel for gaining control was one that was well worth making. By ensuring that she stayed out of the limelight, she was still able to obtain fuel from the more personal nature of her fuel matrix around her, family, friends, etc., whilst avoiding many of the potential threats to control by simply not appearing on other people's radars. It might, of course, prevented her difficulties with regard to residual benefits. Her income, no doubt, would have taken a severe dip. And, of course, with character traits, she would have less exposure to people compared to when she was more famous. But the fact is, it enabled her to nullify potential threats to control by not having them manifest in the first place. And where they did, she just stayed in a position of withdrawal. It was more difficult for her in the immediate aftermath of the court defeat. Not only did that cause her substantial wounding, as I have explained, in parts passim, but the fact is, there was a sudden drop in the amount of fuel that she was receiving. 
that would cause a problem for her. She was used to getting fuel at a high level, and it dropped to a much lower level. That would have resulted in her paranoia increasing, and she would experience perhaps something akin to depression. She would feel under siege. However, as the various threats to control receded, as people lost interest in her and moved on to something else, as is often the way with the world's media and social media, her fuel levels then balanced out. In effect, she got used to the fuel being provided from different aspects of her fuel matrix. Remember that the majority of the fuel, even for a famous person, will come from primary and secondary sources. The tertiary sources could be there in their thousands, tens of thousands, their millions. But the famous person doesn't necessarily always access that because they don't see it. They don't necessarily see everything that's being written about them or watch everything that's being said about them. They may receive that, of course, as a consequence of adoration from the masses at an awards ceremony or if they provide some kind of concert or rally. But she would have experienced this drop-off, which would have had a detrimental impact to begin with, and then her fuel will have balanced out. And since then, she will have had an effective fuel matrix, ensuring that she continued to remain fueled, whilst staying in a position of withdrawal to nullify potential threats to control. But is this period now over? Well, in The Spectator, Coburn asks, is Amber Heard staging a subtle comeback? In just one short year, Amber Heard has transformed from arguably the most hated woman on the planet to some kind of new and improved Spanish celebrity. Amber moved to Madrid months after she was sued by her ex-husband, Johnny Depp, for defamation. In a viral TikTok video, Heard answers questions from reporters saying in Spanish, I love Spain so much. When they ask if she plans on staying, she replied, Yes, I hope so. Yes, I love living here. After being asked if she has movie projects on the horizon, she says yes, and adds, I move on, that's life. She nullifies the threat to control that there was the past and the defeat by not visiting it, but instead dismisses it by saying that she's focusing on the future. Coburn writes, it turns out that exiling yourself to a new country for privacy can be an effective PR strategy. Take note, Harry and Harry's wife. Amber was spotted at a film festival at the weekend for her first public event since the trial in June 2022. Her new movie, In the Fire, will be her first since DC Studios released Zack Snyder's Justice League in 2021. In the Fire follows a widowed American psychiatrist who arrives in a rich farm in Colombia after being called to solve the case of a disturbed child, whose mother is concerned by a local priest's accusation that the child is possessed by the devil, according to an official synopsis for the film. When the doctor arrives, she discovers that the boy's mother is dead and that the father himself has begun to believe in the, public, in the possible possession of the child. Fans are enthusiastic, positive fuel, about Heard's return to the screen, with some calling it her renaissance, with others saying, seeing all the support for her makes me so happy. Heard resurfaced just a month after her ex. Johnny Depp appeared at the Cannes Film Festival over the border in France for the premiere of Jean de Barry, his first film since the divorce and defamation debacle. Coburn is relieved to see the pair back working again separately, as no doubt are the chambermaids of Western Europe. Accordingly, after a period of withdrawal and silence, it would appear that Amber Heard may well be staging a very subtle comeback. Her narcissism, of course, hasn't gone away. It would still need her to get the prime aims, but it has shifted in the manner that it has done so, operating more effectively, for instance, than the way that Harry's wife does. Of course, her desire for fuel can increase again, alongside those residual benefits that come with fame. And therefore, 
it may well be the case that she starts to put herself back on the world stage, starting with this particular movie. She hasn't changed, be under no illusion. All she has done is, in accordance with her narcissism, withdraw to nullify those threats to control. She hasn't suddenly decided, I'm a bad person, the world doesn't like me, I'm going to reform myself, although she might try and portray that. It's simply that her narcissism continues to function, but does so by causing her to remain a low profile. It still gets the fuel, it still asserts control, still goes after the character traits and residual benefits, but not in a high-profile manner as it did before. Johnny Depp will undoubtedly come up on her radar. It's unlikely that she would necessarily be scouring social media and trying to keep tabs on him, although some narcissists would behave that way. But largely, she will have not have been thinking about him. And occasionally, a memory would pop into her head or somebody might mention something relating to Johnny Depp. Or she might have a memory triggered by something that she sees that links that world to Depp. As far as we know, she's never approached him, meaning that her narcissism did not deem the direct assertion of control, a hoover, as an appropriate way to go about matters, most likely because it anticipated, notwithstanding this passage of time, that she would still be met with failure. And therefore, as a self-defence mechanism, it does not cause her to do something that is going to cause her problems, i.e. repeated wounding. The more likely outcome is that she will have smeared Depp, muttering about him to an appropriate lieutenant or member of the coterie who would agree that he is an awful human being, etc., giving her that subconscious sense of control, or lamenting her circumstances through a pity play, which again causes that person to respond favourably, criticising Depp as having hurt her unnecessarily, etc., and therefore it gives her that subconscious sense of control over Depp, whilst demonstrating that the relevant appliance that's talking to her is also under control. Furthermore, in many instances, she will just jettison him, basically her narcissism telling her that she's better off without him and far more content in her role living in Spain. Thus, he will have popped up, he will have come upon her radar, her narcissism will have needed to effect some form of control of him, but it will not have done so directly. And instead, it has focused on keeping her away as much as possible from threats to control, but it might be starting to change, as she may well be on the comeback trail. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.